Good morning, everybody. It's a big pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I'm going to present to you here a project uh, that is called Unfold Nest. Um, that it can be really helpful for us to think about the concepts and the ideas we have been talking about in the last three days. Um, in the case of Unfold, uh, it was a young media professionals project uh, made during a program held by Cygnus, where we try to use digital narratives to promote the care of our common home, uh, to spread the values. Uh, yeah, mask off, that's a good idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, to spread the values of Laudato Si from a very inclusive and open perspective. There you are going to see a small summary of what we are going to talk about in the next few minutes. Um, but first of all, I will need us to agree that on Fall Nest for these first minutes, it's going to be an ebook. It is not an ebook, but I am satisfied if we can start thinking about it as it, so we can start explaining a bit what is it. Why Unfold would be also a good example of uh, what we are doing now to promote this care of our common home? Well, basically because in there we try to use the opportunities and the potentialities of technology to hack the system. And what do we mean by hacking the system? Basically using those tools in unexpected ways. Um, what we try to, to promote and, and to invite people through this communicational product was to leave an immersive experience, an interactive experience, where they are, can go through a journey of the schooling. And this idea of journeys of the schooling and the process of learning journeys, it's exactly what this program that Cygnus prepared for us had to, to give. Um, I'm going to, to explain very fast what was this program about. As I told you, it was held in 2020. Uh, nine young media professionals from different parts of the world. Some of them are here, some others are probably following us online. Uh, we were gathered in India uh, for a four-month course uh, regarding the protection of our common home, compassion and social communication course. Um, as you might be imagining, in the middle of the program, it was a four-month program, but it was a bit longer because the pandemic hit the world. So. As dramatic and chaotic as you might think, it has some of those components, but I am also very sure that that pandemic really helped us to get to this point and to get to this final product that we tried to, to create. Uh, and what's it, this learning journey thing about? Basically to rethink all the concepts that we're taking for granted, try to start thinking which narratives, which concepts, and which ideas are there inside of us that we cannot even imagine or, or we just don't realize they are there. So the proposal was basically to reboot ourselves and start trying to create new narratives to explain what was happening around us. Um, the global context, I won't stay longer here because we have talked a lot, reflected a lot about this and, and many other of, of the people and the speakers here have explained it very well. But we can just say that we were in a tipping point of history and the pandemic even made it worse. Uh, so these concepts of progress and the ideas that we had in our mind to explain what was going on in the world started to, to be useful. We needed to think about new concepts. And Laudato Si was a very helpful tool to make that process. Um, as all of you know, Laudato Si has many insightful uh, ideas and inputs. Um, but for me, one of the best of, of that proposals of Pope Francis is this idea of thinking of all the crises as part of the same crisis. And where our opener speaker was saying that we cannot just move one piece, that we need to move all of them. Well, that's what Laudato Si proposes, this idea of interconnection and integrality that also opens up to a really big challenge because it seems that we have a lot of work to do. We cannot just have isolated ideas, projects, or, or proposals, we need to start thinking in moving all the pieces. And that's terrifying, right? Because there's so much to do. But on the other hand, it is also bringing us hope because it means that we need to work on every single space and at all levels. Uh, and we try to do that in Unfullness. We try to create a communicational product that could inspire and mobilize others to action. We wanted people to jump from this digital media product to the real world to start making the change that we want to see. 
And the approach that we used for that was uh, a planetary, dialogical, and interconnected pers perspective, as you can see here. And what does it mean? Basically, that we didn't want only uh, to take care about human relations. We needed to look at it deeply and start to think in the full creation. And we needed to do it with a, dialog a dialogical perspective because we really need to start listening to the others to reach out and, and stand up for them. So if we were able to do this, and when I am speaking about us, I'm speaking about the church, we cannot do this change alone. We need to start working with others. We need to be open from heart and mind to start working with others and start changing the world with others. So this was our proposal. Uh, as you may see there, you will see some of the amazing work that my friends and teammates have done, including my dear Kiki over there. Uh, and here is the real definition of the ebook that I talked to you about a, a couple of minutes ago. It's not an ebook. It's instead uh, an interactive, multi-narrative, and transmedia flipbook. But that's a really long definition. Uh, where we propose an engaging experience for the reader, we want a reader that starts reading it and finish the book being another person. And that can be like really a lot, but I promise that if you give it a shot, you're going to see that it's really transforming. So when they went through this, uh, this path that we propose, the idea is at the end, they can start moving to this conversion that we want to see. Uh, for the creation of this project, as you can see here in some of the backstage uh, pictures of the team working there, I separated the process in six stages. Um, the first of all was a deep understanding for us of what did we wanted to do. Um, basically, we didn't want to spread only a rational awareness. We know that the information is there. We know that many people know about the crisis that we are facing. So we didn't want only to spread awareness. What we wanted was to go deeper in that and understand which are the, the ethics, the abusive ethics through which we have been living and all the things that we just take for granted and make us being abusive with our nature and the common home the entire time. So from that starting point, we realized that we didn't have the correct concepts and the correct narratives to work on it. And that was a huge challenge because we needed to create new narratives. And that's what we tried to do, and hopefully we, we did it. Um, starting from the narrative style, starting from the fonts chosen, the kind of narrative that you're going to see, we tried to design a whole new experience to create a really nice product for the eyes, but also for your heart and mind. Uh, one of the main characteristics of it is this hopscotch structure where we try to evocate uh, that really famous novel of Julio Cortázar, Rayuela, uh, where the reader has a really important role. You have a reader over there that needs to make decisions, that need to make his own path through the reading. Um, and it also gives an interaction and the possibility to create through that narrative. At the end, what we wanted was uh, to promote a pilgrim journey. Uh, and that pilgrim journey would mean that every person that is reading the book can have the chance to embrace Laudato Si values from his own perspective, from his own interests, from his expertise, from his spirituality. We didn't want to create a closed book where people read only our experience and our perspective. We wanted it to be as open, as inclusive as it was possible. At the end of each of the path, there is an invitation to reflect and act. Because as I was telling you, we have read a lot, we have discussed a lot, but we need to act to protect our common home. So the final idea of each of the path that you will see in the next slide when we talk about the narratives, it's to make a difference. That we can jump from the digital world to the real world and start making a change. Here is the narrative structure, a little messy, you might think, I promise it's not messy. There's just a lot of numbers and, and arrows over there. Uh, basically, it is uh, a three paths uh, narrative. Each of them has an independent flow, but all of them are also interconnected uh, through the sanctions where you can see that they can change the path that they are going, but also through the content that is inside the book. 
And here you would see a bit of what's inside, some of the chapters of the book, some of the supplies over there. And in these circles, every time that you touch one of those circles, you are following a different path and an interactive action inside the book. Um, at the end, what we wanted or what we expected was to create a book that has an open narrative where each reader can go through the paths and at the end decide to make another path or go to the real world and start to make a change. And with that, what we wanted at the end was to create an expansive wave of change because if each reader makes a small change, then we are moving a lot of the pieces of the puzzle. We wanted to promote an authentic concern for justice, for peace, maybe starting in the digital world but moving to the real world as well, and to respect to all forms of life. Um, and talking about what we have been uh, discussing the last days, we believe that it's possible to build better and new societies working together with people from very different ways of life. And we believe that true synodality enables encounter that leads to transformation. And for us, even if it, uh, the world wasn't uh, there, we really believe that what happened in India with my nine fellows was a process of synodality. Um, so before finishing, I would like you to know the entire team, my very talented friends uh, all over the world, and also some pictures of our full team, uh, and many others who were online supporting us. Thank you very much for that experience. And at last, here is where you can find it. Uh, if you scan that QR code, you will be able to take part in the trip. It's open and free access worldwide. It's in English, you can use it, take a look at it, take it to, back to your countries, share it with all the people that you want. We will be really delighted if you can go through it and tell us what do you think. I will be back to this slide in just a minute, but there you have my personal email and also the talent program uh, email for Cygnus. I will back there so you can scan it if you want it. Thank you very much for your time. It was a big pleasure for me to be here with you.